Cauã de novo, vai Cauã, fez metade, Cauãzinho, é na tua Cauã! O tempo tá passando, Punil, tem que correr o jogador, vai ter que voltar Duque! It's been a clash of the Titans and nothing so far has been left standing, not least of all, our expectations. On screen right now, a very pumped up loud after making the crowd just the same. Incredible showing on split. What? I, I said this to you beforehand. I'm like, this is tough to analyze because it's very volatile. There's a lot of these individual moments that are defining rounds, defining round streaks even... But Aspas gets circumvented for much of this map by Loud. They know yeah. him so well, they know how to avoid him too. Yeah, I think that last round in particular was one where he had that op. He finally got it online and he just got completely uh, pushed out, right? He didn't find a way to actually get on any angles and that's really tough, but you're, you're right. I mean, expectations were thrown out the window with that game and it was very scrappy. I was upset about the first half, but I, I really think it was more clean in the second half and it came down not to individual play like you know, the aim being really good for one person, one person being on, but more so individual decision making from everybody in the server. Yeah, Lev, they're gonna have to, uh, they're gonna have to go workshop this one. Split, oh, yeah. not, not working out for them with either comp, but uh, that's all right. They got time to fix that one up. And I agree with you. First half, I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> He was, like, he was screaming constantly, the mini map! <laughs> just yeah. holding onto the edge of the desk. We were he was losing it. We were going through all the stages of grief. He did anger, I was sadness. But by the second it's half. It's like upside down, we're all the emotions, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I was confusion. So there you go. Lev and Loud. Like these are the two bet like two of the top teams in the league. And I was I, after last weekend, I was saying, America's looks good, man. Like we look fantastic. And then they, they, it was those first six rounds. But <laughs> uh, after that, I'm I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I'm yes, much I much more impressed with both of these teams. Definitely satisfied. And I was satisfied as well with uh, QCK's performance. He's been quietly just playing well. Uh, yep. You know, I'll try and text on this previous map on the Rays head-to-head. -head. Hasn't had any incredible, unbelievable standout moments where he's dropping an ace, whatever the case may be like that. But he's been good. He's been good this I mean, Stretch by contrast, I mean, he is being compared to Tex here. It's probably a bit unfavorable for, for Tex, who, you know, we don't see as much duelers from at the moment. He gets moved over to race, so Aspas can play the jet, which is already something that kind of raised some eyebrows, Bala. How do you feel that head-to-head -head sort of played out and where Tex maybe struggled at points? Yeah, I think Tex um, wasn't getting as set up as you, you might have seen um you know, Aspas and like on the map like Bind or anything like that. I think he, because they're playing double duelists, he doesn't get that same attention. Uh, but I, you know, I didn't think he played horrible. Mm -hmm. I think there was definitely some moments with the satchels and stuff like that that weren't ideal. But um, Tex is, he's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's not going to have to be forced to play that, that role all the time. And even if he does, like the more experience and the more time he gets on it, I think I'll be. I'll be perfectly satisfied with him, too. Yeah, definitely. It was a perfectly fine game. And Lev's game, scrappiness aside, was exactly what you expected when they pull out the 2023 yeah. comp, switching off the crazy one. It was everything we saw last year, yeah. which Loud were certainly expecting. And with Loud's comp, with the double initiator, with the breach, that is offering more opportunities for QCK to be set up to pick up kills as well. I, I, but it's it's not just between techs. It's also, uh, you know, really outshone Ospos in that map as well. Pull, yeah, go for, on. for sure. I, I was thinking that the, there was a lot of instances in that map where some of the old stuff that we saw in 2023 with the comp that Lev ran was catching Loud by surprise uh, simply because the timings were really good for Leviathan. They were just, like, randomly throwing less walking up a ramp, for example, and finding incredible value, just instant picks on uh, calm, for example, like stuff like that is uh, really, really nice that Loud was doing to counter, which honestly was part of that, that strat book for the comp that Love was running. He was insane, uh, I have to say. He was very good. And honestly, if he wasn't in the server, Loud would not have come back. Not that he was like the key factor to them ending the comeback, but um, I, I think less pivotal. This guy found so many crucial kills. Look really explosive. Both Viper players having a great game, but I mean, did that, that sort of Viper's pit moment with the spike down towards yes. B main, double spray down through the pit, yep. uh, you know, almost, you know, and then that round almost got very close at the end, right, with that last player, uh, you know, coming up and finding a couple of headshots moving through. So, this is 
what you should be expecting from map, map number three as well. And we already have a teaser. We already have seen Loud on this particular map play a composition that, frankly, uh, frankly, Sentinels didn't really know what to do about, right? Wyatt, do we expect to see that Phoenix make another appearance again, much like he did on Bind? Yeah, 100%. No, sure. yeah, I, no. I can't expect, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine they would switch off that. And I can't imagine that Lev will be falling for yeah, the traps I mean, that uh, uh, Sentinels, excuse me, were falling for in that game. For context, every time Loud has gone for a big like meta shift idea like they're doing right now with the Breach Phoenix, uh, they've they've stuck with it on many, yeah, many different maps. Like Harbor true. Viper last year, they did the same thing at Champs with Breach uh, on Ascent. They played it on Pearl. Like there were so many different things that uh, they, they stick to it. They always commit. How often do other teams try and emulate this from Loud? Like are they trendsetters or do teams avoid playing this? Way because they don't have the brain of Sadak on their side. They were last year. They were they trendsetted hard with the harbor double harbor controller Viper. stuff yeah. early in 2023. They pioneered that and it set the tone for many months of the year. I think more people will be skeptical yeah. with a yeah. Phoenix in the server <laughs> yeah. because Harbor, for context, was new in the game. There was a, a bunch of things that you literally have never seen before. Phoenix has been around since the game came out <laughs> and has never really been that great Nobody since has like, the on Ignition team, series. <laughs> like, so we're, you know, it's it's going to be harder to maybe convince the other, other pro teams that this is the way. But... I mean, hell, if they just go and smash everybody and make it to Madrid, I, you know, maybe we'll see Dirk on Phoenix. <laughs> I think, like, uh, f for the ingenuity side of Loud, like, the Harbor Viper stuff was trendy in the sense that, like, people were trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure out how to make Harbor work, and they made it work, right? So that was easy for them to be like, yes, that is something that I want to do. I'm going to copy it. Whereas this other stuff that they're throwing out, like, maybe if it was, like, Gecko or something like that, or Gecko Yor or something like that, a lot of teams are trying to make it work. And, you know. Gecko Fade, like, C9 to fade, something green. like that. Yep. Yeah, but this one is off the deep end. Uh, not, like, crazy, but I don't think people are super interested in emulating it. No shock here to see the Leviathan composition coming into this map, and here it is. Yes, the new faithful for Loud. Phoenix, Breach alongside the KO, Viper, and Omen. So Leviathan had better have studied uh, that Loud matchup previously versus yeah. Sentinels and figure out how to deal with this relentless onslaught of util, disruptive post-plant situations. Can't wait to dive headfirst into this one as Leviathan surely are bracing to deal with this composition for all the action, of course. We're headed down to our casters once more. Brennan Sideshow, take us in. That's the question, isn't it? You know, how much have they looked at the bots, the footage? How prepped are they for this loud composition? Because, you know, you can watch the bots, that's one thing. But are you actually going to be ready to deal with it? Because, listen, this loud comp, they want to brawl, they want to contest, they want to fight. They have, like, yeah. God knows how many flashes, like 60? Yeah. Like, I, I don't even know. But, but it's the mollies as well. It's the space yeah. denial that's actually huge, especially when the eggs are come to A. But I think if you look back at the VOD, you don't have to try to theorycraft entirely because Sentinels did figure out eventually how to deal with them on the defense side. And I think Loud can copy some of that. And what was working, if you think back, was those fast retakes towards A. The increase in pace, the quick retake, holding onto the utility and then popping forwards. Yeah. That ended up working. We'll see whether Leviathan have a similar approach. Now, we've been talking the entire time about Aspas versus his former team. These are three big maps for him individually. And he's got the jet here without really another individual that he's going to be dueling against specifically. He's just going to have to try to navigate the utility on the other side. And it's going to be relentless. Flashes all over the bloody place. It's going to be in his face. Ooh, Sadak. Hello. Hot flash play. And no noise made. Sadak actually just cuts himself deep to the corner there. And spots it. So info gain. Be main control. Be given up. And yeah, you've got to deal with these. The flash is close to the corner. It doesn't matter if you're paranoid up. QCK close quarters is how he likes to take it. Now players trying to anchor Aspas back to corner and dice. Everybody collapsing. Left for the retake for Tex. Poor Ex soul. Extremely good stutter step approach to the B site hit. Yeah. You notice how when they first get into the site, they pause for about five seconds, just making sure that they regroup, are all ready together to then hit the site itself. Really good. 
And this opening kill from QCK is excellent too. They go in, get the entry, punish the player trying to flood, and then hit the side tankers. Good call as well from Sadak, because that was a bit of a default then into the B hit. So they disguised where they were going. Lev are just going to gamble that this one is ending A. <laughs> so they might be correct. Molly though will push them away, looking like they wanted to go for a repeat. Here it is, pop back play, baited out. QCK is only Cross one fight. away from his Phoenix ultimate. I mean, insane. He's gonna have it for the bonus round, no matter what. You get the B main orb, they have control of B main. I mean, do you, do you up? need it this round though? That's no, the other question, no, you don't. right? Yeah. They've broken the stack over from Levy attack by playing this default. Sadak deliberately gets tagged by that knife and now he's gonna choose the timing to try to split A. Great calling by Loud. Just trying to sail their way through. Yes, it's against an eco round, but you don't wanna run it into the stack. They've slowed it down just enough that the players have been picked and pulled apart in terms of their positioning, so. Hello. That's a very aggressive push from Com. Just calling Sadak's bluff there. Don't blame it though. Off angle, last pass dealt with. Not enough of the dash. Matino straight at his face. 30 seconds. Door closed and the plant online. Can't think there's too much danger, but you never know. Remaining. Very good setup from QCK and Calency, making sure that they neutralize what's going on. And calm. Classic calm play. Always be flanking. So now Loud have got this Phoenix ult available for the next round. Three Bulldogs saved into it, and Sadak didn't buy, so he's able to purchase a rifle here. So there's going to be some serious weaponry. In fact, I think Les also didn't buy, so they've got extremely good weaponry available. This push out from Com is good. He's clearly got a good read on what was happening there with the macro game. But a little, too little, too late. Now, how do Loud choose to use QCK's ultimate? Shadows traveling. Ooh, in the danger zone. Two is. Up through mid, though. A big split is on the cards. Paranoia. Not oh, quite delayed, actually. Does catch onto the players. Out in market, but he pause. And now they want to try and play this one. Striking at the right time. Aspas. Disengaging, dashing back to the rest of his team, aiming to anchor, but if you're not the front section of the side, and that gives time and space for Les to really start to get some kills. But look at this, the pause in the play. It's Again, so good. It's so damn good. It's so similar to the pistol. And because Leviathan have already activated their defense protocols to drop back into back sight, this is really difficult to re-clear. Right Com could do it if he had a recon dart. They know where Sadak is. The right problem here. is there's people boathouse as well. This is so tough for Levy Yatan to get back into good sports. Not expecting that one. Oh, oh that's my, messy. that's messy. B. King with the two. Do they want to go into these anchoring players? They don't actually know where Mazzino is. He's lurking around mid. They're going to head back into him by the look of it. They're back through. <laughs> Timing! <No! laughs> what? 30 seconds Going one for one there, though. Should still be good enough for Loud. The pixel angle. Should be good enough as Aspas, man. Very true. We've seen Aska, Aspas pull off the 1v2. But it was in a slightly easier position against weaker opponents. And Sadak oh, shuts down Aspas again. He's not scared. He's like, I raised you. I weaned your son. I brought you into this world and I can turn <laughs> you out of it. God. I love the calls, though, from Loud. Pause at the right moments. That is, we don't need to see that again. But we did. But you see how much chaos that puts into the round <laughs> and how difficult that is for Leviathan to deal with. They can't just keep Aspas and Com tucked into backside for the rest of the round. You're just giving up way too much map control, way too much information. Yeah. So when Loud call that much of a freeze, you can either just sit there and gamble that it's a re-hit, or you have to do something a bit more proactive and you're not in a good spot to do that. You know, a lot of teams, they have a safe word for that, for calling the freeze. Yeah? Yeah. I know one team's is pineapple. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You think it's a joke, I mean, it's not. Making sure you just stop them in the tracks in the midst of all of it. You get hectic in the comms. It's 
Same playbook for Loud here. They know they're against the half buy, so they're just poking. A little bit of util through main, seeking a response out of them. The Lev don't bite. And QCK has had this ultimate online now. You know, for quite some time. Here he decides to use it. It's into the stack. Now they know that there's at least three people there. QCK's got that information for them. Do they still choose to commit? Yeah, sending out a util. It's going flying. Paranoia's there on top of it. Flashes over the top. The Molly's out over towards heaven as well. No ground being gained. Is I believe those are King's flashes that he's been sending flying, but no. Hello. Lovely shot. And the utility pressure is enormous. QCK's taking a little bit of a gamble up here. But he's got a good position, and it's only calm on the other side. There's a risk that this could go wrong. There is. Like you said. But he's got backup here. See the way that Sadak and Kawanzeen are backing him up. Hunting for these kills. I mean, they want to just funnel these orbs back yeah. into QCK. Get the ult back online. He's just expended it. He's so close to having this ult online already. If he picked up both ult orbs, he could use the Phoenix ult again. I mean, excellent work from Loud, making sure that, that they keep the focus there. But also, you think back to how that exec worked. They have double mollies on heaven, and then flashes, and then they punish the peak from Mazzino, who tried to come out. I mean, where do you... Where, Normally, the way that you want to apply pressure to Flood Retake over towards, or Flood Defend, the A site of Ascent, you want to dominate Hiven as the defenders, and you want to threaten a push out through the smoke. All of that's being covered by the utility from Loud. Scanning ahead. Odin's fan play, you've got to be ready for that. Ah, they're not ready. My ult is ready. Oh, it's a classic one. It really it is. Levy wrote the book, I think. It was, yeah, last season when it was Nods were playing it. But Com is super happy running the same kind of play. Zadok is on his own here. Just faking war. It's the pulses and an old command. They put it exactly to where the Odin needs to be. Mazzino. Off there. Everybody Five holding down, down their own ground. Territory. Finally given up. Conceded here. So Les will be able to get himself standing. onto the side. A bit of a tap of the plan. He's trying to see if he can say, yeah, okay. There's one. Maybe a chance for a second. Playing as bad as well as he can, but when you're blinded up against the box. Spammable. Darts there. Weaving in and out. He's dealt with. Unusual round from Loud, that one. Sadak getting dropped to his knees. But he was completely alone as well. You know, Loud really trying to disguise where they were going from. And of course, it doesn't help that he lost the Phoenix at the very beginning of the round there. Now I think, I think Loud's composition seems to trend attack sided just from the small amount that we've seen of their composition so far. Really hard, this rough. Well, Aspas is gonna try, he's got the operator looking to try and push out based on the turret contact he's been made. Hello, Whoa, oh, this is Fury. really early. Where's this one going? Players are being lit up. A couple of bursts left standing there, Sadak. Really no worse for wear, I mean, yeah, take chunk of it, but still alive and kicking. Pretty rare that Com doesn't get a kill with that kind of thing, actually. And they're looking to clear out Catwalk. QCK tries to take his time in. This is not a fight Ooh, you want to take. That's a wide swing. Surprised that Mazina didn't get the kill there, but I think he was just smoking. Main. Didn't have the gun out. And because Aspas is giving them good information over towards B, there are three players stacked here for Lev on the A side of the map. The question is really, can you do anything against the utility when it comes through? If there's a Phoenix ult in your face and the mollies and the flashes, well, there's not going to be a Phoenix ult, at least not for a while. That was a call by Lev in the middle of that. They paranoid, refighting into mid. But that also is another tool gone for a potential fast retake. Yeah. Four players just holding into the position out towards tree. It's counter spam on counter spam. Both teams just aiming to try and get that advantage. How are they aiming? Spike planted. Smokes in the face, it matters not. Pit now down. A bit of that cover into this post plan. After shock, slightly off the mark. Housing. There's nothing really to direct that one. I think that's just Com just spamming into the floor, knowing that that player is in hell. Tui's picked up a player in mid, so they know that there's somebody potentially backstabbing. Com isn't quite aware of the no, timing. Flash is good too. It's being watched for. It's all about that timing though. Aspas running around. Footsteps made. Body blocking each other. Bullet tagging down. Running them down. They want to get that up out of his hands. 
Tasty morsel. <laughs> Running after him with the retreat. Oh, no way! That's, oh, that's 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 How is Aspa slipping away from this? He should not get out. There's no way. They can't run him down in time. Listen, he doesn't have the eel nickname, but yeah, okay. Not applying it <laughs> just well, yet. He slipped out. He did slip out. But at the same time, he's found no value in this map so far. They're not doing anything with Aspas. Not only allowed finding ways to navigate around the areas that he's playing, but even if Aspas was in that area, how is he going to be able to find value against stuns, flashes in his face? He's just, just going to get pushed back anyway. You can. Lev forced to take a timeout. Their economy in shambles. It's only that operator that was barely saved by Aspas. That's what Aspas was feeling at the end of the round. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I'm glad you handled that. I mean, I listen, I was seeking a response. I couldn't They're find after anything. Me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th this is extremely dominant from Loud here. Leviathan have not figured out a solution. And I think part of the problem is they're looking for, like, the Lurk player. You think back to what they did in that round. They used the Paranoia to clear out Catwalk, and they're triple stacked over Catwalk. Yeah, they want to play a retake, but they're actually using a bunch of their retake utility just to fight in the round. They've used the Paranoia. They used the KO Flash. They, they've used other utility like the drone that might be useful on a retake. You need flashes, you need recons to be able to get back into this site if you want to play a fast retake like that. So, I feel like while they understand they can't anchor against Lau's comp, they're not really setting themselves up for success in the retake either. To be honest, I think the op is actually really difficult to get value from yeah. against this comp because you're just going to be playing retake so often. It's hampering the, them. Yeah, that's tough for Aspas. Now that I've said this, Aspas is going to get an ace with the op, isn't it? <laughs> One player, two years. Shots fired into mid. He knows it's compromised, doesn't overstep it. Great awareness. Yeah. Just with a jiggle. Spots it out. No wonder they're there. Wall. Creeping themselves into the site now. That Phoenix wall is so good. I mean, even other teams that tried to win the Phoenix in the past have figured out how great that one is. Look at the difficulties Aspas is having. I mean, to get value. It's just impossible. Smokes propped up, flashes on top of him. Mazzino with the timing. Nice! Nice! nice. Sanak! He's knifing him! <laughs> right here, right now. Okay, aftershock up top into heaven. Everybody back away. Gotta respect it. And how do you play this one again? Retaking with the operator. You don't have guns, your sheriffs and buys are purchasing. Two years. Bloody hell. Looking like the streets of Great Britain with the knives out swinging. Still, Aspas is there. Off your feet. Rolling thunder. <laughs> Back into tree. Pushing them away. It's just brutal. There's no chance for Lev here. I mean, Loud thinks there's some kind of threat, so they've used the alt, but man, there's no way for Leviathan to get back in. Look at the orb they're taking damage through. So much utility they'd have to pass through. The time ticking down. Even as Lev make it look a little dangerous. Nice knowing you. What's the threat? There really isn't That's one. Yeah. Standing. Loud cleaning up. Building an economy that is just utterly booming. And Aspas, utterly boomed. I mean, he's saving the operator again yeah, in this round. It's just like a cursed artifact. It is. He's, he's got it. You want it, but it might be hindering you. He got his first kill of the map so far. They're just not, for one, not walking into the off sight lines. No. And two, when they do, there's usually a wall in the space, a smoke in the space, a flash to set up somebody onto the angle. And that's the thing. Loud are not really playing super spread around the map. Even when they used to play the default composition, Loud have been the best team in the world at Ascent at various times throughout their history by just 4 one on attack side almost every round. They don't care about being fancy. They're just like, no, we're just going to hit a site. Well, this time, Aspas might actually Dash. take contact. Two plays forwards, playing anti-flash to the corner, tucked, oh. but he doesn't know the timing. He doesn't know the timing! Brutal. He's the expecting one time, them to clear. The one time they don't use the utility. What? He's expecting it. King answers right back. And two topple in mid, the B split. Put an end to it. Reclearance is caught by Loud, straight through into mid. Another chance for Tex, but it's traded less. Right there, instantaneously. They're all just trying to tuck down. into one and duns. Let's he got Oh, really damn, a web, a king. Just a little bit better. Precise. 
Did have the read indeed. So 50 seconds now. Spike in the hands of Kawazina. There's definitely chances, but it requires kills. It requires more than that. King. Dusted. Nice way to play it, Bacom. He's right there with him. What is replicable about that round? Not much. Leviathan. Not much. <laughs> I mean, I guess the general concept that they're trying to backfill after the utility's been used. You know, uh, trying to uh, find yeah, the timing after the Yeah, fast once the flashes are used. Look, this was immediately Pussy. after the flash, but also King got two bullets, two kills in a spray transfer. And then everybody from Lev just kind of walked into off angles to catch Loud off guard. Can they pull a round like that out again? Another 4-1 default here for Loud. Throwing utility heavily into a name, pushing back anybody that might be there. Like they're gonna be hard pressed. Never played by Lev. Good awareness. Yeah, with the spam and the awareness reload. It's gonna be heard. They're gonna be fast on this. Yes, they are. Paranoia flies forwards. Attempting to set this one up, but they paused it just at the right time here. Baiting out again. That util Aspas. Holding his nerve, sees the jump spot, Kawazin. Still going for this one with a jump spot, that's so damn wide! Oh. The shot's still not taken, Aspas thinks they could have lurked up onto him. Hey. We might see a huge duel between Les and Tex oh, in B main. No, Tex gives it up, chooses to fight towards market instead. Does he really swing into this one? Yes he does, he's just out wide. It's really no support play. there. Huge play indeed! Being made all over the bloody place! QCK! Up the gut of the map! And he guts out two of them. No chance. And Loud have the spike on A. Just ready to go back into an A split. It's twists and turns. Mazzino is left just bewildered. Bewildered. He's thinking they could be in. They could have walked. We've lost control of the map. Eons ago. King's pots. A glimpse. Oh. <laughs> Gives Les a new haircut, but Les answers back with a bullet between the eyes. And this is just heartbreak. I mean, Tex forced to retreat, forced to save. It's loud running away with this. I mean, yeah, we said what we know of this comp. Attack side. Loud are good with it. You can't really stop them. They're like a bulldozer. They just run all over you with your defensive setups. But even when they're slowing down rounds like this, they are picking you apart. Yeah, I mean, this... <laughs> this round is... QCK finding a timing, right? Basically. And Tex stopped the mid to be idea. Whether it was a fake or whether it was a reality. He falls at the very end, having done his best, but it's QCK who lights the world on fire. Aspas still really struggling to find value. And I think Leviathan are being pushed and pulled around the map because they feel like they have to respond to anywhere there could be a threat of an exec happening. But I really think they can take it a little more chill and just try to play retake in more of these situations. Think back to what Loud did on Split, where they just gave up a lot of the map and held on to their utility. I think that would be a better option for them. But we had questions. Will Leviathan have an answer for this composition that they must have done study for? Thus far, not really. No answer. We what we were saying right at the beginning, I mean, listen, you can VOD review this con. You can think you've got the theory down, but it's one thing to have that, and another thing to just try and put it into action as well. I'm not scared to use the ults here. Two, in quick succession, just being offloaded, making sure that they get themselves into the A site. Rotating where the mollies go as well. Trying to clear for Aspas, who might have been hiding in that top corner with a dash right online. There. Lev not set up for a fast retake again this round, and probably just holding on to their ultimates for the next, for a rifle round. It'll be Aspas to try to get a pick, but he's forced to use his dash. Look at the flashes they've got. I mean, it is just relentless, the onslaught. It doesn't stop. Spam with the rifles. Nice kill here, but again, the time is ticking. Molly, damage done, and that. Watching for it. Texan was going down just to the tail end of the snake bite. I'm going to go with it with the timings. Com. Being hunted out. It's loud. I really want these ultimates as well, but they're going to give this one up here. Another round for them. Up to eight. Two left in the half. And remember, we're expecting Loud to struggle a little more on the defense side, even though Ascent is normally defense sided. This composition has gaps in it, and it's going to need to rotate around to fill them. 
because it lacks that sentinel. But at the same time, Loud already have eight rounds in their attack side. Lev would have to put something fabulous together to be able to pull this one back. Aspas chilling, thinking. Levy time with a timeout. The coach is trying to have some input. Lev have saved up so many ultimates here. I mean, massive retake ults. Time to use them. You would think? Time to use them. The timeout as well. You gotta cook something up. Uh, Loud failed with this compositional archetype on Bind. They weren't able to get over the line, despite a fairly good comeback late on in the map. But if Loud are dominating to this degree, you've got to put respect on Sadak's name. Not only is he still performing with a retooled roster that's lost its arguably best player in Aspas, but he's also reinventing a meta that works for them and continuing to dominate, yeah. at least here, on Ascent. And he's so creative with it. I mean, we genuinely might see Durka play in Phoenix in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> this is just madness. But I think there are ways for Leviathan to play around this. It's just that they haven't quite figured them out yet. Maybe came into the map with a wrong idea of exactly how this would play out. But their, their ultimates are enormous right now. Aspas is just using the knives. Coffany available to them. It, we'll put a presence there. Quash and a dart all combined up. Sadak. Surely got to be worried about the spam there from Cat. They've been doing it two rounds now for Lev, but no, he wasn't. Yeah, he certainly could have fallen there, the shorty shot missing. And it was actually a really early paranoia invested as well from Tui's, just to push anybody off the A angle. Bit of a default, not really taking any map control, and now looking to end in an exec. Disguising where they're going to end, making it feel like it could be a slow round, and making it tough for Leviathan to figure out where they're finishing Man, and just, at what timing in the round they're finishing. It's that uncertainty that gets settled into the round here that causes Lev to be Flash. using all their util. Instead of saving it for these retakes, using it to reclear, take space where they could be. And I think, I think this is really ambitious from Mazzino, trying to hard anchor the site without his paranoia. He threw it at the start of the round because he was worried it was going to be a fast hit. How does Mazzino get value? What in the Lord's name? Okay, Hunter's Fury just from the slightest tag of the tower. Ooh. Timmy putting in work and so is gone. What an Lovely angle. Kill. Lovely damage dealt towards him and a real chance here for Lev. They can put a stop to this. TP4 was done. Two years inside the site. Here in that plant, Mazzino's there still weaving backwards, forwards inside these smokes. You don't want to let anything slip here, just like that. Sadak ripped to pieces alongside King and they flooded right back into this one. Less. Got a lot to do. Too many targets to deal with. And as it turns out, Loud just assumed that there was nobody playing site. They didn't even realize that Mazzino was there. The damage, however, had already been done. Com getting huge value out of his ultimate. Waiting for the attackers to pass through tree, and then he has just such a beautiful angle there from Market. Last round in the half. Tagging multiple people at once and being able to help his team swing. There's the ult, there's the spam. All that off the turret's contact. Yeah, Here in the Phoenix wall too, but... And that allows Leviathan to save these big retake ults. Aspas is gonna go for another operator here. He hasn't been able to find any value with it, but he's going to give it one last good old college try. <laughs> that it is one last chance here in the first half. Shot barely missing. Here we go. A bit of a rapid approach. What they call rolling thunder. Does catch them. Util has to be pushed back out of them now with the no command. Waves emanating. King has used the ultimate here, choosing not to play it for retake. Sadak and QCK want to establish this position. Oh, so close. Oh, it's difficult. Paranoia. They need to be able to fight over tree control because they have to deny this lockdown. I'm fine, but listen, they can't just fight over this right now. Tuck into the corner, Mazzino. He's got nowhere to run. The lockdown's going up to heaven instead. Molly rebounding. There's the lockdown. Finally going to be used to push these players back out and wide. Should grant access to left. Can't lose any players, though. Look at them. They're just fast. Dash forward still. Holding the ground, trying to spam this. Two years, you're gonna be going down with a ship, son, detained. And here's the real chance. Can they keep Tui's alive? Needs to be pushed out here. Oh, Spotted no. him. Good night. 
Flash in your hands. King not being caught with his trash down by the angles, but still the main player holding it for them. QCK is alive and he's watching down this angle. Not many bullets left. King, half, defuse. Here's the footsteps sticking all the way. Gets the one, maybe the second. Half again. Those were the last player is denied. It's less to claim it. A nine to three in the half. That looked so Switching doable sides. for Levy at hand. They finally strung together a retake that had some pace behind it, and they really put the squeeze on to Loud. There might have even been a chance for King to just stick that. Look at the timing. Oh, I don't think so. I think he does make the right play by trying to come off it and get the kill immediately, but man, that is perfect timing by Les. Could have been anyone's game there, but guess what? Liz is standing by with some extremely loud fans. Thank you so much, boys. And yes, extremely loud fans. I might not need the microphone. Can you yell one more time so they can hear you? Exactly who you are. Say Vamo for me. Vamo! That's who you've been hearing. <laughs> but some extremely diehard fans of loud, including Sadak's wife and QCK's girlfriend and Liz alone. Um, and then we have, why are we laughing? No, <laughs> we have Pietro and Cowie as well. Now I have to ask you, I already know who your favorite players are of Loud. Who are your favorite players of Loud? Less. Less, why less? Uh, he's a really consistent player since uh, the champions in 2022. Mm -hmm. So I always watch him and he's like a big player. What about you? Who's your favorite player? It's Sajak. Why? It's the best she shall. He is literally, sincerely, one of the best. Now, this has been a very, very tight, close game thus far, or a, a two maps thus far, and now we're in a, a bit of a, a kind of a runaway for Loud. How are we feeling? Are we anxious that it's a 9-3 curse, or are we like, ah, no, they got it? No, this time it can be a curse. We just got to overwhelm that. We cannot remember about what happened last year, and just keep going and doing the best that we can do as, as a fan to support the team. Yes. And I have to ask you, this is QC, one of QCK's like biggest debuts ever. Are you How proud are you of QCK? He's the better I love. Two matches in a row. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, everyone's fine. This has been such a close game. Now, any predictions? We have prediction on the score line. What do you think the score is gonna be? Anyone? It finishes at 13-3. See, the last person that said that they lost like right away. So I need you to know you might be cursing them. But you know what? It's been a good game thus far. You've been cheering. You've been, dare I say, loud. And it's been awesome to hear. So give it up one more time for the very, very loud fans of Loud. And Sideshow and Bren, back to you. Bobo! <laughs> the Vamos been filling the room up, honestly. Take the roof right off with the cheers. And Loud leading 9-3. to three. We won't talk about last year. No, oh, mention no, no. it. We won't mention it. Josh, it was us casting it. No, no, no. And I'm just saying, we put, were in this position. It's put, not Icebox. Put it out your Okay, mind. sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, nine to three. I mean, Aspas should have opportunities to actually pierce through this loud composition now that he's on the attack side. The roles really are flipped when you're up against this comp. Normally, the Jets feast on defense on ascent, but I think he's going to have to go huge on the entry. And loud, remember, they're going to have to be pretty active and mobile around the map because they don't have too much information. No alarm bot, no turret. The knife just catches comm over here that. on Catwalk. That's all they've got to work with. Oh, no way. <laughs> Almost there with the timing. QCK. If he wanted it, he could feel it with the drone being used. Straight through market, less. Stands rooted down with the sheriff, but one for one, traded out. Damage exchanged with a ghost shot. Spammed and peppering them. Half HP on Aspas. But a plant online, so the site's gained four number. How does the post plan look? And what is the call by Loud here? Do they want to try and go fast? And Lucy and Nate tucked close to the corner. Kawazine gets away with murder there. Right to the side, Mazzino. He's removed. King, Flash, heads it up now for the re-peak. The team, they need to try and refight this one, but Loud are nowhere near, actually. Now we're only just making the moves here to the front section of the site. Aspas has got to really just do one, but it's all King. And now from the back, Aspas. Straight from main. King has been having such a phenomenal series, honestly. I mean, the, all of the calling has also been excellent up until this map where he's not been able to figure out the defensive setups. But on an individual level, he's popping off. And these two kills have just potentially saved his team Enemy from a retake that looked like it had a lot of sting to it. Lev have got to make sure that they capitalize on this. 
They've got to make sure that they convert this one. And I've been looking into these second rounds, Brent. Here. I've, I've just been crunching some basic numbers. <laughs> the second rounds are getting, like, converted way less than they used to in the past after uh, winning the bonus. Which is bizarre, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem to make sense because normally Trap teams play. have only got Trap play. classics, but it's stuff like this happening. I think teams are just getting a lot better with how they work the ecos. <laughs> and my god, if you have people like Les on the team with a sheriff, things can get deadly. You're right. It's the util. I mean, how to use it, combine it all together, even despite the classics. I mean, you, you think, right, with the outlaw coming into the game, seeing less force buys, people really just managing the economy, so they've got nothing coming into these rounds. The danger's still there. Persuaded for now by Aspas. He's deep into the site, needs his team to back him up. Anchoring player, that's Kauzi! Ridiculous. Right click. I'm telling you, these ecos are absurd. No way. Eventually dealt with. King is so isolated, but unknown, unexpected. Yeah. And deals the death blow to take any danger out of the round. Is he going to be able to get another rifle? Yes. Yeah. They keep an additional spectre there. So Lev is still going to have a pretty good buy to try to apply some additional pressure in this round. His... Consistency off the, sh off the charts, really, honestly, with Les's sheriff accuracy, these shots he's finding, but matters not. Critical round one. Now, if they can convert the bonus on top, they will be very, Kill very happy. That's why Lever set in their sights. Smoke at the feet, just in case the flash play over the top, but Aspas doesn't get caught by it. It's fast now. Up through mid. This is so quick. Market dashed forwards right into a smoke. He's pushed less all the way back, and there's an anchoring position. Attained here by Lau at the back. All the way, look at that, three players. They're just waiting to see if there's a response from Loud. Have people decided to rotate? Is there danger? Most similar scenes as well of how Loud were choosing to play their attack sides. When they were slowing sure. it down with the B pops, they forced the position back. And again, the question is, do Loud want to just hold and hope that it's a re-hit? But if you're wrong, three players are just sat in back B site for no reason. They are gambling correctly here. 50 seconds. Knife. Moving away the to util. Or perhaps not. Mid Breaking round call. Door. Mid round calls. And to be the castle. Sada. Surely not. Sada. Surely not. He not hears them. Into him. He hears them all colliding right into him. Sada. Down. The dangerous, dangerous dead. man with a judge weaponry in his hands, and it's these close quarter angles could really just do some serious work from Mazzino. It's captured and dealt with. And remember, Leviathan have no idea where Tui's is. Throughout all of this, Tui's pushed out a name, just gathering some information for the rest of his team. And now, paranoia has got to be going through the minds of Aspas and Tex. They've got to make a play happen. Flash, Aspas, close. Bites his time, waiting for the peak, but now he's revealed his hand. Has to drop down to the low ground. Four players working against it. Paranoia is perfect. Blind as anything, they cannot see a thing. The Molly's doing the work. They know they've got them cornered. They know they've got Aspas trapped. And QCK with full confidence in the rest of his team. Sticks this one. Aspas! Almost making me a believer. Overall, though, extremely good round from out there. I mean, they just have three people turtling about the site. You're thinking, all right, this is a fantastic timing to try to navigate their way over towards A. And yet Sadak with the judge again finds One enemy. the exact read on where his opponents are going to go. Just immaculate positioning. Insanity. How does he do it? Yeah. But that was a bonus round for Leviathan. They can still buy. They're getting up to large ultimates. Unfortunately, they still trail by five rounds. On a hell of a climb ahead of them. It's loud. Feels like they're in control. Getting up to some critical ultimates as well. Be main control. Yeah, and Sadak's shooting there with the classic. So if I'm Tex, I'm thinking that guy definitely still got a judge. <laughs> 100%.
Sad eye sad with a re-clear. Running around, yeah. assuming everyone's scared of him. And if Kawanzine dies on a duel, oh, there's no way. No. There's no way. There's oh. no way. There's no way. With the all closed. You can't read this. You can't read. You just this. can't. Kawanzine's there too. Crossfire setup. Judge and rifles. Why are you repeating that, Sadak? <laughs> You're joking! Was. You're joking! Please, come and see in. But he's running around the map. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> dealt with. He can't get away with it. He just can't get away with it. Four versus four. Dash gonna be fading here. The reclearer. Oh, that's fast. What are you staring at? The mini map, most likely. Doesn't get punished. No kill there. Messina from the top. Six. But Asmus has splash in the back. Asmus does have the spike. If he 27 dying, seconds. I mean, this is madness. This what is, is all, happening? The, all the scrappiness of Split condensed into one round of Ascent. But I think Lev have somehow navigated these choppy waters. Somehow. on site. Somehow got themselves an open site. Full retake now, set up left. for Loud. Not quite the full roster. Lovely angle here for Aspas. You can play a high-low with the rest of his team, but the flashes might be a bit of a problem. Repositioning now. I don't think you expect this one. Oh, no way. All the way through. Unfortunate for Aspas, just didn't have the gun out. Stun, there's a connection. Tex can't do anything. Same with Aspas. Backside players have got to do work and do it right now. Aspas! Absolutely incredible. And the work is done. The job is done. Listen. Sixth round on the board for Lev. Two players surviving with the rifles. That looked so close. I mean, Kawanzin's stun is perfection again. Catching on to Leviathan. And yet the follow-up just not quite there, and Aspas somehow manages to spray down both of the players with his phantom. A reminder, Aspas had essentially no impact on the defense side. I mean, barely any. And he's now 10 and 10, which shows you how much he's been able to do on the attack side. He's been absolutely instrumental in getting his team back into this race. And Lev set up to continue this momentum forwards. Could be. Sometimes it's the easy rounds that get away from you. The Bucky's and the shotguns and the sheriffs. Yeah, I mean, there's still so much danger. The Bucky's yeah. ridiculous right now, by the way. Absolutely <laughs> it's, ridiculous. It's a silly gun. It's so cheap. I've been doing the world tour of rank playing an APAC. I'm telling you, they are Bucky pilled. They're ahead of the game. <laughs> well, it looks like Anzine and Sadak are catching on. I mean, they've got a bait set up here as well. Les takes contact first and then plays Kawanzine in with the Bucky. That's some serious danger over here. Trying to neutralize it with the drone. Spotted up. Cover thing close. Good work to break that with the Soviet utility. Excellent awareness from Kong. The question is, do they commit? Because now they've essentially given away their hand, but everybody on left is around here. Fake dash from Aspas, trying to bait out more plays over here. Might have just got body bomb by his team. I'm not too sure, but yeah, maybe. Not ready yet. How much you thought they really used here, and no they've only gained B main. Hunter's Fury has to be used now. Oh my god, Kawazin! Finally, somebody deals with this guy. Brought down, one for one. They are finding it difficult to get into this site. Lev, finally, making moves, and luckily nobody just tucked away towards the back section of it. They could have just really put an end to this. Plant down. So cool being made here by Lau. Listen, they do have the weaker guns. They're in through B main, tagged up QCK. Pushing them back, reflanked by Com. All the way behind them. Backup policy. In effect, Decay kicking in. King has fallen. And there's another one, ripping them apart. I talked about it. Accuracy with the sheriffs, Com. Had to come up clutch there, and he has got the one kill, but he's left it to Mazzino. Into the back of the site, smoked off. In through the smoke. This is stuck all the way loud. It's daylight robbery! It's daylight bloody robbery! It's unbelievable what this team is doing. The weaponry that they came into this round with was essentially... It's nothing! Off. Bottom of the barrel! Two buckies, a couple of sheriffs. But what, what did they I say, man? What did I say? I mean, there's always danger in these rounds. You can't count these teams out. No. And the mad part is, Lev was seeing ghosts everywhere. There was only two players defending B, and yet Lev was so... Scared. They used the whole arsenal to clear B main, and even then they used the dash, a flash, everything. Past and that point. And they still got caught by Kawanzine at logs. Yeah. So, so, what good does it do? You tried to be as thorough as possible, clearing out every possible location that Lau could be playing in. Still got caught by a Bucky. 
and then King gets spammed through the wall and it spirals out of control. Com completely cleared out of B main, by the way, by the paranoia play too. Yeah. I mean, Loud just thorough on the retakes, making sure that everything is cleared, even when they have a smaller chance of winning the round because of the weapon. It's got a usual timer for the Loud timeout, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be making full usage of it. For sure. But at the same time, man, I think, you know, Lev have shown that they know what they're doing on this map. And Loud are mostly gonna be playing for retake. If Lev aren't gonna give them nice timings to fight them with the utility, then Loud are gonna play a lot of retakes and Lev got to sharpen up in the post plan. Loud's retake protocols though look so good. And they're gonna be coming back into a potential retake in this round or the next with Phoenix and Breed Shell, which are both excellent in those situations. Paranoia dodge for now, but this is rapid again. Real fast playing to be main, making them think that there could be even more presence here, but dropped. Now the no command. Oh no. Tech's dying. Tech's is dead. Spike That's a spike. Team. It was supposed to be a pivot. Mazzino teleported into B, and the spike is just dropped. They now know exactly where Mazzino is. And he's walking right to them. Oh my goodness, still. Lands his shot, but Les cleans it up. It's getting messy. It's getting scrappy, and this is loud. Set themselves up for the slam dunk finish. At the same time, though, Lev are going to be permitted access to get this spike back. And so now the round is actually going to calm down a little bit into a, a more normal-looking 3v4. Say normal. Yeah, well, Loud to control a lot of the map. Com got that kill, there was a chance. Take nothing short of a miracle, I think, for them to try and make their way. Pass this round, get a win. Oh, what a flash. Yeah, that lineup is excellent, but nobody to follow up on it. Salak grabs info over left. here and it misses Com. The knife giving bad information. And so Com looks like he's called the mid-round. Wow. Tried to pull everybody else from Lev into an A hit. Push back QCK, but again, Loud, I think, are going to be fairly happy to play retake here, even without the breach ultimate. Man, they got so much utility. Oh, they go for oh, it. He's boundless. They just want to flush straight in. They know it. It's going to commit to the spike plan. Loud. Look at him. Prime control here. It's 12 to 6. One more step. That's all that needs to be taken. Amazing decision to decide to flood there with the Phoenix ult. Everybody on the same page. It would have to take six rounds in a row for Lev to pull this one back. It just doesn't look possible. The money running short for Lev as well. I can see it. It's going to be an absolutely dire purchase to stay into the map, to stay into the series. Yes, it's not an elimination game, but there's so much on the line. A win here brings you right to the playoffs. One more game away from Madrid, and Loud can taste it. They can feel it. Turning up the tempo, turning up the heat. It's the B crunch all the way through, but it gives Lev a window. They can try and go fast, hard and loose right now into the A site. Maybe a chance for them to get this plant down, but a spike is still sitting in main. Sai access is theirs. Door finally being closed, but less. I mean, they've brought them enough time. They're all the way here already. Lockdown has to be used to push them back, and it's good timing on it. Yeah, I think this is really useful because it buys them an extra few seconds here. And it actually allows Leviathan to fight, get into more aggressive position. Into the position, rolling thunder now, pushing, oh, no one. leaving all the way around. QCK, such a forward backwards position in through Flash. mid. Flash, no connection. The rest of his team making no marks job. and making the moves out towards him and his Aspas. And the rest of his team. Critical juncture in the map. It all lied on this. And it seems like Lev might have done enough. Fading away, no easy kill. Aspas has always got the covering fire. It's available for them, and with the time ticking, Les, you got to give this one up here. So Lev, taking a deep breath here. Taking guns away is actually important. Oh. And that is a huge amount of guns taken away. Oh. Aspas and King both fall to the spike of all things. That's really damaging to the Leviathan economy. It genuinely is going to make a difference. But Lev had such a great call in that round to pop down this lockdown and then refight over tree. Because it helped them dodge the breach hole. I don't think Count Zine caught a single player with that retake ultimate because everyone had evacuated the site. Extremely good call there from Lev in the post plant, but they're going to need to pull out so many more of those.
so many more. Do it against the ults. Viper's pit. Drop that one down into B main. That's going to be giving them nice and easy control of it throughout this entire round. What is the call for Lev? Viatan, one slip up. Lev can try to work slowly around the map and maybe punish these jiggle peaks. I mean, look at QCK jiggling A main, Sadak jiggling market. If they tried to contact around, maybe they'd find some of these opportunities. Shadows traveling. But they're, at the moment, trying to get posted up a tree, yeah. and that's one of the most difficult places to try to work a pick. You know, you're heading into the breach and omen utility. Major gaps straight down mid here in the defensive protocols. You can see it in the way that Sadak's positioned, but Lev all grouped up now into Cat. Spike really no intention of bringing this one out through into A, just seeing if they can force out that response, and they do. It's going to be so difficult if Lev choose to go mid to B. Here we go, force broken, nade down at their feet. Sadak still with the ult, ready to pop it off at a moment's notice here, but left. straight through mid again. Cause being made with these adjustments, 25 seconds left. Again, it's just on absolutely anyone's game. It's a, a nice scramble. edge, scramble. Where do they go? Straight into Sadak and Cole, listen. Straight to the back of the site. TP, reinforcements finally arriving. There's only a few seconds left and this is the map. It's all on the line and it's crumbled. It's fallen to pieces. Two years, sharp, precise. It's how it finishes, it's how it ends. It's desperation and dire straits all about. All you gotta do is hide. And Loud are going to playoffs. Sick performance by Loud. Showcasing that this combat is not a one and done. Lev had access to the bots. They knew what was coming. They could not stop it. Incredible performance from Loud. And Lev kept it close. You know, it's a great game. Happening over three maps. Lev, I think, proven over the course of this series that they are not just Aspas and friends. Yeah. And Aspas, in fact, actually getting shut down quite a lot by his former team, who played a phenomenal game. Again, knocking the doubters who thought they wouldn't be able to perform without Aspas, without that star at the front. This oh, team man. has still got a lot of danger to them. Oh, they do. And it proves it, right? Comp's got legs on ascent. Real danger zone. Yeah. I mean, if they can refine it a little bit on bind, maybe they can apply it to some other maps too. It's certainly possible. Two to one. So loud again, the victors here. This matchup, always being winners. Two to zero, a little bit closer this time around, actually dropping the map in the end, but well earned is the victory. Well earned is the playoff spot. Aspas didn't realize Sadak knew the whooshy finger hole. <laughs> Incredible performance, though. They're heading through as probably the team to beat right now in America's. Yeah. Uh, you're defending champions from the last regular season as well. And just incredible performance from Loud. Even when things got outrageously scrappy, the individuals stepped up, right? We had, we saw some nutty moments. Oh, the individualism was off the charts. It was. With the plays over here, mate. I, I mean, when you have two really top teams playing against each other, Sometimes individualism comes out even more because they're trying to work around the expectations of their opponents. Yeah. I mean, there was some bonkers stuff in this series. Get the read, get the timing, yeah. It was it was nuts, man. I mean, split. Revisit and that. I mean, Bala's going to be seeing it when he closes his eyes tonight. Yeah, he's, he's going to be seeing it all day long. I think half the other teams in America are going to be seeing this split comp. Uh, sorry, this ascent comp. <laughs> yeah. uh, when they when they dream, they'll be thinking, how do we counter it? What do yeah. we do about it? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, nightmare material for Loud as well. But well earned, as we've already been saying. Let's send it down to Liz. She's down at the stage, standing by with QCK for the Verizon post match. Thank you so much, boys. Now, you called them one of the most dangerous teams in the Americas. I think this one of the most dangerous men in the Americas. Truly a menace in the server. It's QCK, a truly outstanding performance. First thing I want to ask you is about the second half on Vine. It was a very close comeback, very strong. What was happening there, and how did you almost bring it to your side? Primeiro, ela falou né, que vocês são um dos times mais perigosos do mundo, mas você é o homem mais perigoso do mundo. E depois ela passou, é, a outra pergunta foi, é, o, segundo, o segundo tempo da, da Bind foi muito apertado, como é, que, como é que foi a reação de vocês lá? 
Cara, eu acredito que a gente entrou um pouco fraco no jogo, é, tanto individualmente, tanto coletivamente. E conforme os altos foram passando, a gente conseguiu encaixar o nosso jogo. É, a gente começou a acertar mais bala, começou a ler mais o jogo dele, por isso que a gente conseguiu voltar. Uh, I think we we were very weak in the in the beginning, uh, both uh, collectively as a team and also like as players. And um, but I think as the the rounds started, you know coming over and over we, we we were able to read the their game and then we we were back in the game all right similar idea the conversation between map two and map three because this clearly went in your direction what was that conversation like qual foi o papo que vocês bateram entre o mapa 2 e 3 lá atrás porque parece que mudou a direção do jogo para vocês Além de, de a gente já estar aquecido dentro do jogo e mais confiante de ter ganho o segundo mapa, a gente só resetou, era só mais um mapa e um mapa conforto nosso, então a gente só focou no nosso jogo e deu tudo certo. Uh, we were already warmed up, so we just had to reset, uh, and that is a map that we are comfortable playing, so we just needed to focus in the game. Speaking of that map, we've seen that comp once again. Are you nervous or afraid that people might be able to anti-strat that comp now that they've seen it twice? Todo mundo já viu aquele comp nova duas vezes. Você acha que vai haver algum tipo de de, de contra-ataque para essa comp? Eu não posso dar muito spoiler sobre o que a gente vai fazer ou não, mas nosso time é um time muito flexível, então é só não subestimar a gente que a gente pode vir com qualquer coisa para dentro do jogo. Oh, I'm not gonna you know, say a lot. I, can't, I don't want to spoil it, but I think people cannot underestimate us. We are very flexible and we have a lot to show. Yes, scrappy and brutal, as Sideshow and Bren described it. You guys can clap, you feel free. <laughs> um, one last question for you. Is there anyone you'd like to shout out or thank? Quer mandar um alô para alguém da, da plateia? Alguém que tá ali, de repente, na sua direita? Na sua uh... frente? Primeiro, agradecer a minha esposa que tá aqui, é, aos meus teammates, a torcida da Loud, todo mundo que torceu. E queria mandar um recado pro Tex, ele falou que era pra gente não abrir a mira neles, não sei o que aconteceu. <laughs> First of all, I want to say, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna shout out for, to my wife. Uh, she's here. Uh, and then, uh, I'm gonna, I would like to ask Tex, uh, what's up? Because he said to not aim at him or something, and I don't know what happened there. Well, and on that note of love and strife, we're going to send it to the post show with Sadak. Thank you so much. So head to the post show, friends. Thank you. Oh, geez, Liz, it doesn't get any easier for you out there, does it? <laughs> My goodness, you're a trooper holding it down for us all out there in the arena. Welcome to the post show. I'm Uber, of course, and we're joined with the, by rather, the mastermind, Sadak. Welcome, bro. Fantastic Thank you. Thank you game. Thank for having me, yes. Great to have you here. I mean, that, from our perspective, was a really volatile game with a lot of individual moments. How do you feel coming out of a series like that where it could have uh, gone anyone's way? I mean, I'm super excited to be honest. Like facing Leviathan again, it's it's something that always makes me feel special. And now even more having to face Aspas, <laughs> my once my baby, now <laughs> my enemy. Now, you're probably really tired of like asking questions like this. I do yes. want to talk about your team uh, during this time, but just from you, I want to know like what the rebuilding process is has been like. That's only one player that you change, but feel like you you sort of rebuild the team sort of in a big way to not play around Aspas. And you guys have been really quiet in the off-season, right? <laughs> Working really hard, but no one knew what you were cooking up. So tell us what that process has been like for you and the team. Um, so basically when I signed with Loud, I pretty much knew we were gonna, we were gonna have to change the game plan we had because in the past we put a lot of resources into Aspas yeah. because the way he plays, he's a, basically a, a god when it comes to mechanics, right? So now we adopted more towards more of a flexible play style, whereas you can see uh, quick playing Rays, playing yeah. uh, Phoenix, and that gave us like a, a whole new set of tactics we can we can use. Uh, the off season we pretty much focus on, you know, finding to, finding tuning. You know, yeah, yeah. tuning the, yeah. the the compositions. Now now you can see we're not playing with Sentinels, which is super good. <laughs> I hate Sentinels by the way, not the all the the, the things. <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> just, just to be clear. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty much it. Yeah. Pretty much I it, mean, yeah. there's been a lot of tactics, uh, yes. <laughs> a lot of changes yes. in the compositions too. We'll, we'll get to that, but I want to ask a little bit more about Aspas because in the first map you went seven and four against him. It felt <laughs> like. Uh... <laughs> you think you can defeat me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dragon like Ball Shifu. villain. I'm Shifu, and he's. Uh... The one, well, you know, That's the one. I, mean, I think Josh yes. said that yeah. on the broadcast too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It felt like you were hunting him, man. It felt kind of. I mean, I, b when he left, I was pretty much yeah, I have to kill him. Of course, like I have. To, I, don't, I don't. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna lose, but I have to kill him. Like every time I can, I'm gonna try to well, kill him. When's the knife coming? Because you knife. You knife Bro, did you knife today? I was so scared. I was so, what the, how? How did I knife him? Like it was so. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you, uh, you guys were in the off season, when you were coming up with these comps, who was like, you know, let's try this Phoenix. Let's give the Phoenix and the Breach a shot. Uh, I mean, I have a soft, uh, soft spot for flashes. So I, had, I was like, just play flashes, guy. Fucking just. <laughs> Like, what does he have flashes? Yoru, no, Yoru's bad. Fuck, fuck Yoru. Reina, Jesus Christ. No Reina, man. Uh, and it was pretty much Phoenix. Yeah, pretty much. Phoenix. And it used, it used to be even better, but with the Sky Nerf, yeah. like, it, it, we took a toll. So uh, you tell me oh, so you running. switched from Sky to Breach? Yeah, basically, bro, it. when we had Sky, it was Jesus Christ. It was <laughs> unstoppable. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because we have pretty much everything. We have info, we have like the, the dog, so it was super busted. Well, why is no one trying? Why, why are you guys still on playing Phoenix? I mean, part of innovating is risking, you know? And people don't like to risk at, the, at this level, so... Makes sense why we are a little bit crazy. I mean, I'm a little bit crazy, and my coaches always try to, no, don't do this. Keep you in yeah, line, yeah. Maybe we can try this, so it'll be safer. And we're like, no, flashes, <laughs> give me flashes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Why do you think no one has figured out how to deal with that that Phoenix based composition yet, especially on Ascent? This is now the second time you showed it. You were not afraid to show it straight away this season. Some teams maybe, you know, hide a little bit of their strats, but this is now two teams. Leviathan had a chance to look at the footage of your game against uh, uh, well, your, your last game or when you played that Phoenix comp, they haven't figured it out either. Why do you think that is? I think we have a lot of flexible player in a way like we can switch our play style a lot. You can see like we, we can play aggressive, we can play post plan, we can play retakes. We, we have like a lot of resources to switch our, our play style. So they see us in a way and now we play a different way. Like for example, this match against Leviathan, we just went A, like nonstop because we knew like it's super hard to stop a bridge, the Phoenix, all the Molotovs and all, those, all of that. But if, I don't know, if it was really hard, we would go to B. And we have a lot of resources to do with B. So uh, I think the composition gave us, at least for me as an IGL, gives me a lot of tools to, to play around and to yeah. maybe have fun with the enemy, you know? So yeah, yeah. pretty much it. For sure. I, I wanted to ask just uh, on QCK, because he's been playing for so long at a pretty high pro level in Brazil, like since way back 2020, early in the game. Yeah. And this is his first shot on like our top, top team. So did you always see something in him that wasn't really being tapped into yet? Or like, how, how did you come to well, the I'm decision be, that he was like, the right I'm guy? I'm going to be honest, uh, way back, like when I used to play in Latam, wasn't like nothing... Like way, way back at the beginning of, of Valorant. Before Vikings. Like. Yeah, for Vikings. No, not even Vikings. Before <laughs> yeah, that. Before yeah. I remember him just, uh, how can I say, killing me on hookah over and over again with Reyna. <laughs> and I was like, how, how can that guy do that to me? You know, like I was so upset. And then watching him join Fury, I, I was going to play with him on, on Vikings. Mm -hmm. So he, he's someone like we, we, we investigated. Like I investigated way back. And... Uh, Seeing him like playing other roles uh, that there weren't like he was playing sentinels, he was playing like controllers, he wasn't playing duelist. And that guy's a machine playing duelist. Like he know how to take advantage. You saw like all the plays he did today. So for us, it's what like okay, what do we need? We need people that can be flexible. We need people that have experience. And for us, it was like yeah, QCK. Of course, it's gonna have, has to be him. Uh now you're one step closer to going to Madrid, right? You're the first international tournament of the, of the year. Um, how are you looking at the landscape overall in the global scene right now? EMEA, Fnatic is over there still tearing it up, and Pacific. Are you, are you guys feeling very comfortable going into those, that you could you could take home a trophy this year? Well, I can confidently say NA has to be, like, high tier level of Valorant. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have to, like, you, you can watch, like, all the games are higher level, whereas maybe in Asia and in Europe, I can see some, like, maybe people are struggling a little bit more, 
mm -hmm. here. And here you have so much level, it's, it's disgusting. Like people play really well here. And the competitiveness is, the competitiveness is super high here. So I, I think maybe if we win or, or maybe, I don't know, energy goals or whatever, it's going to be like NA is going to be, have a lot of chances to, to succeed outside. I, I would agree, but the beginning of the split game was making me really mad. We don't bro. talk about that. <laughs> we have I mean, a, I'm gonna be, okay, we're going to okay, talk okay, about it more, honest, It was super cold there, okay? It was super, super cold, and we were missing our shots, and we're like, Come on, guys. Come on. What are we doing, man? I mean, we had to read every single time we were, we were just were struggling to kill them. All over the map, man. Like, it was the, there's a round I want to show you. Yeah. That's no, no, like, no, no. it's <laughs> the question. Yes, you have right. the answer for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, strongly disagree. You, you have uh, the answer for this. Look, what, I don't what, know to tell you what, what was going on. So the, the spike is planted on B. Oh, yeah, I knew he was there. <laughs> Dude, that was like 20 seconds away. Yeah, I, think I, was this man, I was gonna kill him. <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, guys, you guys play the retake, I'm killing him, don't worry. Yes. Oh, uh, poor that was my, uh, that was... I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were counting kills against Aspas, not, not other individuals. I mean, <laughs> if I have to kill that. my hand, I'm not just gonna leave it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's move on and play a bit of a game. You wanna play a game with us? Agree. All right, love that. <laughs> we wanna know where our pro player friends stand on some of these very important, very impactful Kick off takes. The game is simple. I'm going to read a statement and I want to know where you stand. So, uh, you know, you can join us, Hadak. You two down there as, as well. Get involved with the paddles. Do you agree, strongly agree, disagree, or strongly disagree? First statement, here it is. It Sent spicy. Sentinel agents are overrated. <laughs> oh my god. If I had like four of these, I would, I would use it for sure, yeah. I, I feel like I'm getting peer pressured into agreeing. Right. <laughs> why, why is that? Overrated. Yeah. I mean, let's just give you like sight. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, like, okay, you have kill shot. They have the turret. You have uh, cipher. You have the camera. Like, they, you can get information in so many ways in this game. So you don't really need those. Even You're, even with like sky now having just you know, less flash flexibility. Yeah, I mean, let, let's talk about like the sky meta. It should be the sky meta. Like the flash is saying. Uh, Blinded, right? Uh, it was like a lot of good information, and you don't need to play with a with a sentinel to to have the info you need to to finish the round. You know? Yeah. I agree with what you're saying, but I disagree that he's overrated. I, I disagree that sentinels are overrated because, like. The fact that you have information is is one thing, but you also can cheat so much with oh, Sentinels. Yeah, yeah. And then you could also run setups off of like trips, off of cameras, all that stuff that you can't necessarily, like, without risk. You yeah, know what yeah, I, mean? I understand. So like, I don't think they're overrated, but I also don't like them too. You mean how we're seeing like- <laughs> Like, like I'm with you on that. Like, I don't like Sentinels. On the fence. <laughs> I don't the like Sentinels. Answer. But they're they're good. You're referring to like NRG stacking like four players on a site. Yeah, you can yeah. cheat. Like you don't even have to play the side sometimes. Yeah, like yeah, that's true. Okay, but. let's go on to our next one. Just a little bit more spicy, maybe divisive even. South American Valorant is better than North American Valorant. Agree, disagree, strongly agree, <laughs> strongly disagree. Uh, what's South America Valorant? Like that goes to Brazil and all of that? Yeah, let's, let's, let's say LATAM, let's say LATAM. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, agree. Okay, agree. <laughs> he has to, he has to. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I, 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 you disagree? I disagree, I, yeah. I give, I, not the strong agree, but I give it yeah, the yeah, agree. Me too, me too, like yeah, I think agree. I give it the no, agree. No, come on. Uh, uh, Sentinels need North saucer. America are the ascension. <laughs> Champions! They literally won the tournament about like ascension. about ascension. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't. I mean, you could have been, you could have been anything. You choose ascension. Well, yeah. Why okay. does that matter more than you know? I would say because, like maybe because like the, maybe last year it was more towards NA, but like this year I think it's more towards South America because you can see like. Can I just say something real quick? We, we, if it's we, a better point, yeah. Time, we have go for it. one South American team, you guys, yeah. and obviously MIB, like who's a top team? We have MIB Air Furia. They're, they're good, but they're yeah. not top teams. And then Leviathan is not even a South American team anymore. It's a North American oh, okay. split. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, true. But it's majority I mean, it's South I mean, American. It is, it is. They have a Brazilian and two Latam, right? Yeah. So yeah. it counts as a South American. I'm just American. saying, though, it's not full. <laughs> and, and I'm just... Listen, I'm gonna throw it back to Saucy. Still on Sentinels. That's that true. matters too. Yeah, that's that not matters a, yeah. too. We have a secret agent there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. agent. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Next statement. Americas will win Masters Madrid. Strongly agree. Strongly, Strongly agree. agree. America. A regular agree. Okay. A regular agree. You're a little more lukewarm Strongly. on this. Why is Strongly. that? Uh, 
I mean, it's just Actually, the, the existence of Fnatic. Is... Yeah, what are we talking okay. about? Fnatic I mean, well, exists, that's, bro. Yeah, I, yeah but I, I think it's not that Fnatic are untouchable. They're very good, but do I think that... Uh, do I think Loud yeah, could be Fnatic? Right. Yes. Oh, my God. NRG could be them? <laughs> yes. Like, I think NRG or thumbs Loud can certainly be Fnatic. You went straight but... for the strong me agree, Sadak. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, I mean the, thing that, the thing that I said before, like, I think in NA it has to be the highest level of Valorant right now. Yep. But the thing is, like, we will have to see in Madrid because I don't know how the teams are now. But, like, that year for me was super clear, like, and it was super, super goaded. Do you have much time to keep an eye on other regions while you're in the middle of, of you know, tournaments Not like this? really. I'm, yeah. I'm not. Now I'm watching a little bit more of uh, Pacific because they play at night yeah. here, right? So I have a little bit more of time, but... Yeah, not, not really. Like, I'm not following you that much. Yep. Yep. Busy, busy, of course, down here trying to take dubs and make it to Madrid for Americas. So with the day coming to a close, let's take a look at our bracket. Tomorrow, we've got only the singular match, of course. Finally, we'll get our first look at the new Evil Geniuses roster when they take on G2. I saw a face, Barlow. I was you, laughing because I thought he was laughing at the game, and I was like, well, "What's to laugh about?" <laughs> and now I'm just dying. But no, it's, I'm, I'm excited for that game. I'm excited to see EG. I, I'm also kind of disappointed that we stopped playing, to be honest. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I was like, "One more time." I should have gone. I should have gone to Twitter for the takes. Honestly, we could have found a, a, a backlog of uh, of all of them. So that's what we have to look forward to tomorrow. See what EG has been up to in a very Let's be honest, tumultuous of season. Of course, big thanks to Sadak for coming by. Thank you, thank man. You. Appreciate it. Bro, thanks for playing the game with us as well. And thank you to everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for more here for the America's kickoff. You best not be missing it. Woo! The spin on the whippy. Can he get away with this? Has to reload the clip as it runs dry! Energy not really concerned about that. They're just going to commit to the plant mark. Dropping Oxy, dropping whippy. Three on the round. Jake left alone. Can he pull off what would be a ridiculous miracle? No. I killed Ethan twice. You know that? <laughs> He's gonna want to go deal with this on his own in the smoke. He finds one. He gets the second. One enemy remains. is getting through all five left. players of Leviathan. Looking preordained, that's fast. Finally, there it is, the fight. <laughs> Mazzino. Oh, it's now, there's the one. Can't get it. A 4K for less.